Hey guys, so I wanted to share something that I find very interesting, very thought provoking. Um, you're probably not going to agree with it. I don't either, but I still think it's very, it's a fun topic of conversation. Okay, this is about eliminative materialism. And if you haven't heard about it, don't worry. I, I didn't either until very recently. I've actually been trying to like get a really good understanding on, on, on what this is about because because I wasn't quite sure that I was reading what, I, what, what they were claiming. It's just very, it's, it's a very extreme point of view. So anyway, the, the basic claims about eliminative materialism is about, they're saying, okay, your beliefs and your desires don't really exist. And therefore your mind doesn't exist. And so, and, and the reason why they say that is because they're saying, well, we, ha we can't really explain it. Therefore it must not exist. We can't explain free will. We can't explain consciousness. We can't explain, oh, sorry. We can't explain um, the soul. We can't explain the mind. We can't pinpoint it. There's no formal conclusion. Therefore it must not exist. I, that's just a very wrong and lazy and stupid approach. And I, it just is completely wrong because I'm, but, oh, but let's say I'm, let's say, let's say it's true. Well, what is it then? What is it? What is it? And, and the number one objective that, objection, I'm sorry, that, um, that I keep hearing for the people that think this way is, okay, if my belief is not really true and I'm just fooling myself this entire time, then how can you have the belief on what you're saying right now on, on, on eliminating materialism? How do you explain that? It's entirely contradicting. Um, so there's that. Now, but there's two things though. I mean, I can get on board with what is reductive. And what is reductive is considered to be like um, ontologically conservative. And, and, and that one is fine. And that is, what is reductive is essentially saying like, there's an explanation for what makes a human. So it, it, in simpler terms though, that we're very complex and sometimes there is no explanation or some, or maybe there is no obvious explanation, but people that tend to lean um, to the, the tend to lean or gravitate towards this reductive point of view are like the Richard Dawkins of the world. They, they, for example, they, they believe in the theory of, evol of evolution and, 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 and the reason why we are at this point and, and the way we think is, is thanks to evolution or some other people, another point of view when it comes to this reductive um, idea would be like explaining, okay, everything that has to do with your personality can be attributed to um, neurotransmitters and everything that has to do in the brain. You can explain it all with very practical and objective things. So that's reductive. And that one is, is a little bit, is a lot easier for me to swallow. And I will apply that with certain things, but this, what is eliminated materialism is considered to be more of a, of a, of an ontological, um, ontologically radical point of view. And that is, a, I think that's a very accurate way to, uh, to describe it. It is just too radical, at least for me. Um, but anyway, perhaps I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not understanding this entirely. I was watching this uh, this video by Patricia Churchland that talks a lot about eliminative materialism. She's a firm believer in it. And uh, she gave us this example regarding the uh, how at one point humans believed that the fundamental elements that made human existence, for, for instance, or the, she didn't say that made human existence, but she did say that there was at one point a belief that the fundamental elements were earth, air, fire, and water. But then with the use of technology, they were able to find out that, well, no, those aren't the fundamental elements. The fundamental elements for human life are oxygen and nitrogen and carbon and um, hydrogen, for instance. And so with that, they were able to eliminate the belief that the fundamental elements were earth, air, fire, and water, which was not true. Okay, that's fine. 
But they're not doing that with eliminative materialism though. I wish they did. I wish they said something more along the lines of, okay, beliefs and desires are real, but they're just not found in the mind. But that's not what they're saying. They're truly claiming that they don't exist and therefore your mind doesn't exist. And that's the part that is just too extreme for me. <laughs> so anyway, that's that.